Okay. So, uh, we're doing the review today. Um, and, uh, basically, what most people seemed to like last trimester was for me just to put the review up and us do some of the questions together. So, I thought I would do that for today's. And then um, we'll we'll just go through questions together. You guys can help me out with them, and uh, we'll see how it goes. And if if we can see there's something we need more work on, we could try to do that. Yeah, go ahead. Well, yeah. It, I don't know what you mean. This is your. Yeah, this is your assignment in today's folder. If you go in today's folder and click on the assignment, there's two PDFs there. One one is the blank review, and one is the review filled out with the answer key. So that that's where you would print it out from, if that's what you're asking. But yeah, I mean, like that's that's where I got it from. To be honest, I just downloaded it from there and put it up here. Okay. Um, let's, let's just start with number one. Who should we, we should have a lucky person start the hour. Uh, you know what? I need my dice back. So last year, last year, what I used to do is I have this, this cool castle thing that I bought on Amazon and you put the dice in the top of the castle and it like rolls them and, um, and then, you know. You get a number, and that's represented who is going to go. So I need my dice back. Um, Rocio. Rocio, I don't think you've gone for a couple days. Do you think... Uh, I was just going to say, do you think you could help me with one of those? Let's just pick one of them from one to three. They're all kind of about as equally hard. Which... All right, all right, good call. How do I do this? Okay, so you're doing this equation first. Okay, so I'll make this one red. We'll kind of color code it. So up four, make a point. Okay. Perfect, the slope is one half, so up one to the right two from this point. And um, if you wanted to, you could do that kind of, you know, repeatedly, forwards and backwards, if if you want to make a line that way. Uh, on the test, don't worry about how nice of a line you make, because drawing it with a mouse is horrid. Okay, good. How do we do the other one? Let's, uh, let's go. What color should I use? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Back up. More important questions. What color should we use? Okay, green. Uh, you know what? I better make it an actual normal green. There we go. Okay, so you said uh, what? Okay. Oh, when you said up one, did you mean from that other point or something? Or maybe I heard you wrong. Okay, up five. Okay. Okay, so perfect. So in case you don't see it, um, it's 1x. When there's no number written, it's 1x. And then a whole number you can write as over one. So up one over one. And uh, I'm actually going to do this because my eyes are pretty terrible and this graph is pretty small. And last thing, importantly, Rocio, what am I supposed to answer on this question? Perfect. And uh, you guys absolutely can just estimate or guess this. So, looks like right there, that looks like what? Negative two and a half, three. And um, it's hard to get a good answer by graphing just because, unless your graph is perfect. Uh, and I might have even screwed up where they crossed, just because it's so small. So do know that when you guys answer this, I'm just going to look for an answer that's close to correct. Does anybody have any questions on how that's set up? 
Okay, so we're gonna do we're gonna do like the popcorn method here, and uh, I think that's what it's called. I don't know. I always I don't like the names they have for all these education things. Uh, Rocio, can you just call the next person that's supposed to go? I'm gonna have you guys pick the next person, so you know you, you can't blame me. I like that setup. Grace, okay, good call. Grace, um, I was thinking we should do one of the questions in substitution, so like four, five, or six. Do you think you can pick one of these to help me with? Okay, I'll do that. What color? That, that is another important fact. Uh, I can pick purple. Uh, this is a pinkish purple. Oh, what? Really? That's purple? That doesn't look purple. I thought this was purple. Indigo. Uh, I know that's too many names. Purple. This is not Vikings purple. Apparently Vikings purple is indigo. Okay, what do I do? Do you remember what to do for substitution, or do you want me to help you? Do you want me to remind you kind of a little bit, or...? Yep, here, right? That's perfect. Yep. You're going to put that in place of Y. Yep. Yep. No, that's very good. So 4X minus 3 times, and then instead of Y, I'm going to put 3X plus 2. Um, so basically just short story here. What do I have to do to be able to substitute? Like, there, one thing has to happen. Perfect. That was a great. That was a great way to explain it. So basically, one of the equations has to be x equals or y equals, and then you can use substitution. Uh, good. Okay. So I'll I'll finish this one off. You did a very good job. We're putting it in. Um, so four x, and then we'll take negative three times both of those. So minus nine x, minus six equals negative one. I can put these two together to make negative 5x. And then Grace, while I'm finishing this one up, who's going to help me do the next part of the problem? Okay. Maggie, oh god, I have to vote that one. Uh, Maggie, I got an answer for x. Do you remember how to get the answer for y? And from that, what Where are we getting five, the negative five from? Are you getting it from right here? Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I mean, like you were explaining it, right? But you were giving me info that I wasn't sure where it came from. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's good. So... You, you basically go up and take either equation from the top. Most people would take the, the one that's like solved already. So you take either equation from top, and then you plug in the answer you just found. So I'm going to put negative 1 in place of x. So negative 3 plus 2 would be negative 1. So this would be my answer for 4. Okay, very, very good so far. Uh, Maggie, I need somebody to help me start an elimination question. Um, and I was hoping you could call on somebody who would help me do eight or nine. One of those two. Is that because you have beef with Taylor? Wow. Jeez, that's not very nice. 
I'm to- totally kidding. <laughs> Taylor, can you help me with eight or nine? Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, I mean, like, you meant that correct, yes. So, you basically start by choosing which letter you want to cancel. You you chose the Y's because they're kind of already close. And if we multiply a whole line by negative 1, then it would become plus Y, and so then they would cancel. Perfect. So elimination, we're going to add the two lines together. Yep, no, that's very good. So I'll, I'll rewrite them. So negative 3x plus y equals negative 7. Uh, negative 2x minus y equals negative 3. And now I'm going to add the two lines together. And these cancel. I get negative 5x equals negative 10. Divide by negative 5, and I get 2. And then, uh, Taylor, do you want to help me find the second answer, or do you want somebody else to do it? Okay, who's that somebody else going to be? Okay, Ian? Ian, can you help me find the Y answer? Okay. Well, do you know how to do it even if you zoned out? So one, uh, eight, eight. So once you find the first answer, how do you find the second answer in the same problem? Okay. Well, that's all right. That's kind of why I call on people just to find out if you know or not. So uh, the way we can do this, I can help you with it, is we're going to pick any one of these four equations and we're going to put two in place of x. So usually you just pick the equation that looks the easiest to you. Honestly, uh, they all look, I don't know, they all look just as easy or hard. So I'm just going to pick the top line and you're going to put two in place of x. So, Ian, if I do that, how do I finish solving this? How do I finish solving 6 minus y equals 7? Y is negative 1. Yeah. Oh, don't plug numbers in. Don't plug numbers in. Okay. Uh... I, you're just guessing and checking. We're trying. We're trying to learn how to how to do it without guessing and checking, because once the problems get a lot harder, guess and check becomes almost impossible. So, but your answer was right. So we we have to subtract six from both sides. Let me scroll down. So you subtract six from both sides. And then you get negative y equals 1. And then you, what do you do to both sides to get the final answer? Right now it says negative 1 times y equals 1. By, you're right. What do you divide by? Negative 1. Okay, perfect. Okay, so this, these three things were like the main part of the problem, or part of the chapter. Um, the rest of this stuff is kind of dealing with inequalities and story problems. But these are the main three ideas that we were to take out of this chapter. Um, honestly, I was... I was kind of thinking we should 
just go right to one of these because it's basically like two of the little problems. And so I thought we would pick one of these and do one together because I don't want to take up your whole hour doing all of these problems. Like I want you to have like half the hour left where you can finish up the problems on your own. And so then you would just be done during the class hour today. That's what I'm hoping. Um, Carly? Carly, have you been called on for a while? You have? Uh-oh. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, okay, excellent. So number 14 has two equations. I was hoping you could help me graph the top one, and then I'll have Lorenzo help me graph the bottom one. How do I graph this top one? I don't know. That you were supposed to tell me. That sounded like you were asking me. Are you are you trying to ask? You're not sure which number to do first? Okay. So the number you want to do first is the number by itself. So the plus four would be what you would focus on first. Okay, good. And then you're going to do this number as the slope. So negative backwards. Down three to the right five. So the top number is up and down, bottom number is left and right. So from here, I'm going to go down three to the right five. Okay, very good so far, Carly. Like, I mean, the whole reason we're doing this is so you guys could take little notes yourself on how to do them. Do you remember if it's a dotted line or a solid line? It is solid because there's a line underneath. And then do I shade above or below? So greater than is going to be above. Less than would be below. So um, if I were you, a good idea would be to write these little notes like I'm writing here in your problem. Because then that way, when you're taking the test, you can, you can use these notes to help you out. I'm I'm actually thoroughly impressed with that line I just drew. I usually don't even come close to making straight lines on here. Okay, so I it's a solid line. I'm going to shade above. Honestly, I don't have a good way of shading on this computer because everything seems... Oh, oh you know what? I bet I could use a highlighter. What's that come out like? I don't know. Let's find out. Oh, that's weird. That works. So that's shaded above. Okay, Lorenzo, you're ready for your time to shine here. How do I graph that bottom equation? Okay, good, good start. Okay, good. So I'll write a little note there. So the two means two over one. So up two to the right one. Uh, okay, from this point, so up to to the right one. And I'll do that a couple times because it's really hard to see. Um, am I going to do a dotted line or a solid line? Perfect. My God, this is so hard to see on here. Uh, okay. And then, uh, perfect. That's the other thing I was looking for. This one's shaded below. Let's try a purple highlighter, see how it goes. Oh, well, well, that's the only purple I got. We'll go with it. Lavender. <laughs> well, it, yeah, okay. And then, um, Lorenzo, do you want to call somebody to give me the final answer? Okay, Jackson. What's my actual final answer on this problem? Because what? Perfect, perfect, perfect. 
So what I'm going to color in black is going to be the final, final answer. So what this means is every single point in this black section is true in both equations. Basically, all this red and purple was just work. This black is the actual correct thing. Like, like I could technically just go like this. Even. Oh, that didn't work very good. I could technically go like this. Because this is my final answer. But everything else was the work involved. So these are all the points that would make both equations true. But I will undo that so that that stuff's back. Okay. Okay, very good, Jackson. Jackson, do you want to call on somebody else to help me out? Okay, Austin. Maybe. Austin's computer microphone is iffy. Sure. Oh, yep. Yeah. Oh, geez, you're putting a lot of thought into this. Okay, Garrett. Garrett, um, what color should we work with? Okay, okay, we can do that. All right. The speech team ordered six medium pizzas and five large pizzas, and their total was $107. That's actually decently priced. The drama team ordered five medium and nine large, and their total was 152. How do we go about figuring this out, Garrett? Do you want me to help you set it up, or do you think you feel like you just know it already? I certainly can. Okay, so it's it's obvious that like the first sentence is going to be one equation because you're given some numbers to go with right away. Okay. So, um, basically the variables in this one are going to be the price of a medium and the price of a large. Because if I have six medium pizzas and five large pizzas, I would multiply those together to get the $107. So, my first equation is going to be 6 times the price of a medium pizza plus 5 times the price of a large pizza would come out to be $107. How would I set up the second equation? Perfect. Perfect. Now, the downside to this problem, these aren't numbers we're going to do in our head nicely, um, which kind of stinks because I don't have a calculator on me, really. Um, I would probably choose the M's, and we'll probably multiply the top equation by 5, and the bottom equation by negative 6. And so then that's going to make 30 and negative 30. So 30M plus 25L, this is, what's 107 times 5? Five, uh, 535? Actually, yeah, that's not too bad. Negative 30M, negative 54 large. I'm not even going to pretend to multiply 6 and 152. Does somebody have a calculator on their phone? What did you get? Nine twelve? Okay. 
Thank you. And then Parker, maybe double check that because the reason I hate phone calculators is because it's super easy to type the wrong button. Okay, those are some big numbers though. Uh, so then I'm going to add them together and I get zero. 25 minus 54. God. 29, negative 29. Um, okay. Uh, maybe Adeline or Parker, if you could add 535 minus 912. Thank you. Okay, so negative 377, and then I'm going to divide by negative 29. Um, 13? Pretty sure. All right, perfect. Okay, so we get $13 for large. And for us to find the price of a medium, because the question says find the price of a medium and a large. Well, we just found large. Large is $13. A medium, I'm gonna pick, I'm gonna pick any one of these equations. Um, I'll just pick the bottom one for the heck of it. So five medium plus nine times thirteen. 90 and 27 is 117. Oh my God. This is really taxing my mental abilities here. Oh, what the heck? I was subtracting 117. Uh, 20, 32, 35. So medium pizza would be $7. Okay. I, and I, to be honest, that one took like a billion times longer because they were big numbers. But the most important part of this problem was, I know for your for your guys' viewpoint, the hardest part is usually writing the equations. And so that's kind of why I wanted to practice some of these. Pretty much, pretty much most of them are going to be set up like this one, where you're going to take the number times whatever it was. Most of them are going to be like this. So let's, I'll skip another pizza one. Uh, it's another pizza one. Let's do this one. Gabriella. Oh, something tells me Mr. Caponigri wrote these problems. Because I'm pretty sure those are his kids' names. Um... Megan? Megan, do you uh do you want me to help you go through this one? The start of it? Okay. Uh, I didn't know if you'd be able to start it on your own or if you wanted some help starting. So basically Gabriella made seven paintings and three clay models, and it took twenty-three days total. Now, we're assuming, or what we're trying to find out, is how many days it took for each painting and how many days it took for each clay model. So what I'm going to write is I'm going to write seven paintings times how many days it took to make a painting plus three clay models times how many days it took to make a clay model and then altogether, that would be 23 days. Okay. How would I set up the second equation? Because almost all these problems are going to be set up like this, where you guys, just so you guys know, um, you're going to have a basically like two sentences of information, and you have to write them as equations. And they're usually similar. Do you think you could set up the second one, Megan? Excellent job. 
Very nicely done. Very nicely done. Yep. Yep. I mean, like, from your guys' perspective, I know it can feel confusing on some of these because they're like, they're totally different situations. But I'm, I'm trying to tell you that they're basically all going to be set up like this. Some might have subtraction or something like that, but that's about the only thing that could be different. Um, do you guys want me to help you solve these or not? Like, something tells me you guys are pretty good at solving these with a calculator. It's just you have a hard time writing the equations up. That's my guess. That's usually, that's usually what I see. Let's go with Caleb. Caleb, you're going to be a spokesman for the class. Should I continue solving this one, or do you want me to go on to another question to set it up for you? Okay, I can do that. You're deciding for the class. Um, let's go to let's go to beef sticks and crackers. I mean, why not? It's almost lunchtime. So Charlotte ate four beef sticks and five crackers in thirty-one minutes. That sounds like uh, it sounds like she's prepping for the for the food eating championship, right? She's timing herself. So on Tuesday, she ate two beef sticks and four crackers in twenty minutes. Although I feel like if it took her 20 minutes to eat two beef sticks and four crackers, she's not going to beat Kobayashi or Joey Chestnut. They're basically the, the prime contenders for hot dog eating championships. How long does it take her to each eat food item? Um, uh, Jack. Jack, do you think you could help me set up an equation, or do you want me to set one up for you and then, you know, have you help go from there? Do you want me to help you, I guess? Okay. What? Four? Okay, perfect. So this basically means how many minutes do you eat a beef stick? How many eat it, minutes do you eat a cracker? And 31 minutes total. Good. And then the second equation would be... Good. Good, good, good. Okay, and this, this is actually the exact same as before, where I, I think you guys just need the most help setting up the equations. And I believe the next two questions are similar, where they're about beef sticks and crackers. Oh, just one more. Okay, why don't we stop there, because I didn't want to use up too much of your time today. Um, you now have 26 minutes left, and to be honest... I think I think you could get a lot of this review done in that 26 minutes. Um, and if I don't remember if this needs to be turned in or not. Yes, yes, it is. It's assigned. OK, um, no. So in today's folder, there's a review, which we, we just kind of did. And there's a practice test. That practice test is not worth any points. It's only there in case you want to practice some questions to see what the ones on the test would be like 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 if you're if you're worried about how you're going to answer a question about a line you know you can do the practice test to see what kind, what it would look like but it's it's not worth any points it's just there to help you guys out um so i'll i'll stay on here you know for a while here and answer any kind of questions you guys might have because i know a few people have been messaging me about some help that they might want on some problems so this would probably be a good time to do that if, if they want. Um, other than that, you guys can certainly get off, you know, get off Google Meet whenever you want. Uh, but I'll just stay on here if you have questions. So if you guys take off, thank you for coming. See you tomorrow.